Well, PC Magazine says Google is hiring uh, people in Arizona, or if you're willing to move to Arizona, you can get paid $20 an hour to drive their self-driving cars. Uh, that means sit in them and <laughs> type really fast. You have to yes. type, I think, 40 min words a minute um, to uh, say what's happening in the car. Applicants need a clean driving record and a keen attention to predicting the social aspects of driving. Uh, what do you think about this, Sam? Yeah, what, what they're trying to do here is... Uh, up until now, uh, their fleet of uh, prototypes, self-driving prototypes, have all been driven or have, have been um, operated by uh, engineers, by Google engineers. And so what they're looking to do now is expand the scope uh, to people who aren't engineers who have been developing these vehicles. What they want to they want to get um, some feedback on how people react to riding in these types of vehicles and uh, how they react to the kinds of conditions. Um, you know, when, when they see the vehicles doing certain things, responding in a certain way to traffic conditions, how will the humans react? So they're, they're trying to gauge um, what, the, what the relationship between people in self-driving vehicles is going to be in the future. Yeah, it's, I mean, during the first uh, rollout, it wasn't one of the first problems that, uh, that the people who were riding around, these Google engineers who were riding around, like they got super distracted, like they stopped paying attention. Once they had to stop driving, they would like, you know, just, that that's part of the problem. Like you're not alert. If you're mm -hmm. not driving, you're not alert. Yeah, there, that's, that's, that's one of the problems with uh, going, with the idea of going incrementally from, uh, the manually driven vehicles that we have today to fully autonomous vehicles. So do, doing it in small steps over time, um, the more automation we put in there, the um, the more the less people are going to be paying attention. They'll they get they'll get complacent, and they won't uh, they won't be ready uh, if and when the system needs to disengage for whatever reason. You know whether there's a sensor failure or some situation it can't handle. Uh, they need to be able to be ready to take over. And they're increasingly finding in various studies that the time required for a human to take over from the autonomous system is way too long. And so they're starting to, engineers are starting to come to the realization that they're basically going to have to step directly from the type of what, what we call level two automation, which is similar to autopilot, directly to uh, level four or five, which is essentially fully autonomous uh, systems. And no, and, but and what Google is trying to understand better, you know, how how that relationship is going to work between the the human rider and the uh, the vehicle. So they've started in Silicon Valley. They have cars in Austin. Do you know why Arizona is their next place? Um, it's just they're expanding the scope. Um, they're also adding Portland in there as well. Um, it's just gaining getting more data. Uh, with as with all their other machine learning uh, projects uh, like Google Photos, anything that uh, requires AI uh, development takes a lot of data, and the more the more data you have, the more the, the more the system can learn. And so they're expanding to different types of environments, different driving environments, different weather weather conditions. Uh, so Portland will be the first place you know where they're testing, where there's you know likely to be more rain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and eventually, you know, they'll over time they'll expand into other areas as well to deal with other kinds of road conditions and weather conditions and and just just different driving conditions. Uh, so it's just I think you know uh, Arizona worked out uh, well in terms of what they're able to do from a regulatory standpoint, um, and uh, you know it, it's uh, it's just a good spot for them to test. I think the, the one thing on this job uh, application that was most frightening to me, it required, it says it requires constant focus for six to eight hours I a day. <laughs> it's just, who has that? Oh who does that? I mean, I guess if you are used to like working uh, with machinery, I, I don't know. I mean, hopefully they'll get breaks. Well, I, I would hope so. I yeah. Would so. <laughs> I, think, I think they will get regular breaks during the day. Um, that That is kind of an odd one. Uh I'm not, I think I think mainly what they're looking for there is they want to get as much feedback from the people riding in the cars as they can uh, as, uh, throughout the course of the day, each day that they're in the car. And I'm guessing that they will probably also have cameras and sensors in the vehicle that are monitoring those those people to see how they're doing. So we're looking for feedback from both directions, both from the car, looking at the people and from the people watching the car, watching what the car does.
So, okay, so Tesla is sort of testing these features with cars on the road that are in beta, uh, and Google is going on a, a really different way. Like, which which do you think, I mean, what do you think about the, these two different ways that these that the autonomous uh, technology is being tested? Uh, as somebody who's trained as an engineer, I much prefer the Google approach to this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, putting putting something um, experimental like this out on the road, out on the open road, and just letting customers go at it, um, to me, it doesn't strike me as the wisest thing to do. Um, you know, so far, nothing too serious has happened, uh, but it does seem to me like at some point, it, it, it almost seems inevitable that something really bad is going to happen with one of these autopilot-equipped cars. Uh, hopefully it doesn't, but um, it, it just... It's not, if I was in charge, it, it wouldn't be the way I would do it. <laughs> yeah, it does seem weird to but me. But then again, I'm not Elon Musk, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it seems a little odd to me. And the response to it also seems a little odd. It's like that they're saying, well, you didn't follow the directions. And, you know, we told you that was going to happen if you did that. <laughs> uh, and we know that you did that because we have all the data. Like, they're, you know, like they know when you pressed, when they press the summon. They know when you op when the guy opened the door. They know how long it was before he. And in both instances. Instances, it sounded like there was like a little bit of fumbling where, you know, the, the guy in, in Utah was trying to show someone how it worked. And then it sounded like maybe he was distracted showing them. And then the other woman, it was, it seemed like what she did using the autonomous feature was what you do when you use cruise control. Like you take your foot off the gas and then that was, that's not what you do with this autonomous feature. And so, yeah, it just seems like a little stumbling around and... Yeah, hopefully nothing. Yeah, happens. there's there's a couple of things going on here. You know, first of all, you know, Tesla is doing a, an, an immense amount of data logging on all these cars. So they're logging everything that happens in these cars, much more so than any other manufacturer has ever done that I'm aware of uh, with cars that are in, cu in customer hands. Uh, I mean, it's, it's typical to do this for test vehicles, but, you know, once you sell the vehicle to, to the customer, uh, you generally don't do that kind of data logging without their permission. Um, the other thing that, you know, here is that, again, when I was working as an engineer, you know, developing uh, electronic stability control systems and traction control and anti-lock brakes, the, the assumption we made was that if there was something dumb that a, that a driver could do behind the wheel, we had to de design around that. We had to design the system to, to be resilient to whatever silly thing that a customer might do. Uh, and, you know, we, we had to get, get around a lot of pretty ridiculous um, criteria before we could release our systems to the uh, to production um, Tesla's not doing that you know they're they're putting it out there um, you know somewhere in the fine print you know it says you know here are the limitations but you know I don't think most people are are I mean you know that most people don't read the manual they don't read the fine print they just get in and and use the product um, assuming that it everything's going to be okay and uh, in this case you know the product is not as fully formed as many people think it is um you know i think you know tesla has you know T tesla has been open about the fact that it's beta and that it's not completely you know not everything is working um and it will get better and i I'm, i fully believe that it will get better over time uh everything they've done so far has but um i i guess i as, as i said i wouldn't have i wouldn't have done it the way they're doing it well, Sam, thank you so much for joining us. Sam Abu El Samid uh, is at Navigant Research. Tell everybody the best place they can find your work. Uh, you can find me at navigantresearch.com uh, or you can just uh, Google my name and you'll find uh, my blog. You'll find me on Forbes and uh, all the other social media places where I hang out. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming on. It's thank always you, a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks.